Hey there, and welcome to Game Points episode 133, where weekly we get together, we talk about recent gaming news. I'm, as always, your host, Stephen Brown, and joining me today is... I'm David. Tonight, David, we have some Halo TV series stuff we're going to talk about, uh, some Fallout 76 crossplay rumors have been going on. Which aren't going to happen. Yeah, a couple other things that we want to get into as the show goes on. It's still a relatively light news cycle as we're still recovering from E3. And we don't have any interviews today. So yeah, we don't have the amazing hour-long interview that Brad Wardell was willing to give us. However, I might have another one planned soon. More details Hopefully. on that if they develop. I don't want to get everyone's hopes up, but we'll see how that shakes out. David, before we get into anything, do you want to go ahead and bring up anything over that happened over the weekend? Um, You're not supposed to have anything. I'm just curious if there's anything you wanted to mention. I mean, I finally picked up Endless Space 2 which is a game that I wanted the day it came out, but I put off for reasons unknown because sometimes I just don't have time to play games and I finally have a lull right this very second Mm -hmm. and I've been playing way too much of it. Right. No, I I understand the lull. I'm playing through Nier Automata finally and that game is... That game's something else. Let me tell you what. Anyways. I forgot where I was going to go with this, so let's just go ahead and get (laughs) right into the first story here. We're the, back on top, everybody. Yeah, we back exactly on top. What we're doing. <laughs> this is how this show rolls uh, for those just joining us. This so, is a par for the course. This first story comes from GameStar.de. It's a German website, so I'm going to be using a Google translation of the page here. But I'm going to go ahead and bring it up. Fallout 76. No crossplay because, quote, Sony is not as helpful as everyone would like it to be. That quote from Todd Howard. Fallout 76 will be released in PC, PS4, Xbox One, but a cross-play feature will not be included in the multiplayer game. This is confirmed by Bethesda's game director, Todd Howard, in the GameStar interview. Sony's been taking a lot of shit lately because of the whole Fortnite scenario, where we know for a fact that Fortnite on cross-play is as simple as the guys at Epic flipping a Switch. I mean, they did it already. On purpose. Xbox lets you play with people on Switch, which lets you play people on PC. Everyone's shared except sony what makes things worse is that when you let's say you build a fortnite account on xbox and you want to play on sony the second you do that congratulations that's accounts as a sony account and people are getting kind of salty over it understandably so and this story just adds fuel to the fire speaking with gamestar.de todd howard straight up says hey we want to do it we would love to do it in fact where is the quote right here where is it where is it i had this written out ah here we go Todd Howard is annoyed Sony still may add to saying the following. We would love to do that, but right now it's not possible. And following up with, they're not as helpful as everyone would like. God damn, this is such a bad look for Sony. It's Sony hubris, man. That's how they do it. Yeah, they they forgot the they lessons. They don't need of the to care. They're three. on top. What do you think, Dave? What, what, what's your... You clearly say it's Sony hubris, but do you think this is something they're even going to move on? Or do you think that no. the pressure is going to be At too much? At no point... At no point in this console generation is Sony going to do anything about this. They're going to keep giving non-committal answers and saying that we're looking into it or we have cross-play with both PC and iOS and Android and whatever. We have 80 million users and we don't give a fuck. Do you think what... that when people like Todd Howard start coming out? Because they're not the first people to... Todd Howard's not the first guy to do this. It, it's... Not only are you seeing developers say, yeah, Sony's keeping us from doing it, but they're being really, sh- they're throwing a lot of shade about it, too. Todd Howard's not going to lose them 80 million subscribers. Fair enough. <laughs> I mean, it just it is what it is. They're currently being assholes, and they don't currently see any reason why they should change because they're still on top. Now, as soon as the next console cycle drops, this could be a very different story, and all of a sudden, hey, look at that. Sony's got crossplay for everybody. Fair enough. How much of I it just is... don't I just don't see it happening this this point in time unless their stocks start taking a huge hit or I don't know if they stop having games which they have four new exclusives in the pipeline so I I doubt that having happening either. Do you think this has the legs to even go anywhere? Like what what let, the let's only, say go ahead. The only hope that we really have is that this has a lasting memory for the gamers much like Battlefront 2's loot box fiasco. Because that did actually make a little bit of a change. Like, loot box is a dirty word now in the games industry. Oh, I would say is... Star Wars Battlefront 2 is solely responsible for loot boxes getting pulled. Because EA stretched out so far with that, and they, they just got smacked mm-hmm. down hard. Um, so, like, 
that's that's worrisome, I think, for EA because we'll have to wait to see how Battlefield Five sells to see if it made a difference. Okay. You know, because they're they're changing the format, and right. if if they're listening and people respond in kind, then that's a pretty clear lesson. So, what if more? places start coming out and saying we would love to do crossplay but it's sony that keeps us from doing it say ubisoft comes out and they're like hey division two crossplay and everything but sony because sony won't let us do it like and they're they're not even what's so striking about this story to me is that these developers and publishers aren't even like saying oh we, we there's complications to it they're just straight up saying sony is not allowing us that you rarely see these guys be so blunt yeah that's fair um you would need like everyone to do it. Okay, Take so it's like, hey, our new, our new Borderlands that we just made right now is gonna be crossplay with everybody but Sony. Right. Like that line needs to be in it. And then, I don't, I don't care. Microsoft says, hey, by the way, the next Halo is on Switch and just crossplay. Like, <laughs> hey, real power master. First of all, thanks for showing up in chat. Always appreciate you. Anyone we're seeing YouTube is good to see you live. Uh, you're asking, isn't Ubisoft big enough to stand against Sony? Well, you would think Bethesda's big enough to stand against Sony, too, but they still haven't given any word on what's going on here. Here is the name that you can drop that will make a difference. Are you ready for it? Yeah. Take Two. Yes, but nothing Take Two does, I believe, is What if Red Dead Redemption 2 is crossplay on everything but PlayStation? That would be big enough to make them change. And this... I see a lot of pundits saying because things that like, is going to be the biggest game of the year. We all know oh, that. Oh, absolutely. And if right before release they say, "Hey, by the way, this is crossplay on everything but PlayStation. PlayStation players play alone." Yeah, and is that then, enough to get a lot of people to not buy it on uh, Sony's console? It might be, because it's still going to sell the same amount of copies. They'll just buy their copies on Xbox or PC mm -hmm. or whatever it comes out on. What, I, what strikes me a little nuts is I see a lot of pundits out there saying things like, well, Sony's never done this before. They shouldn't have to do it now. But I look at that and I, see, I go, well, yeah, but crossplay really wasn't a thing until just recently. You never really had these companies talking to each other until just recently. And as everything shifts away from your traditional single-player game to these games as a service, so Destiny, Division, Fortnite, Skull and Bones... Where you have these persistent online worlds, crossplay starts becoming more and more of a necessity over a nice feature to have. It looks like you're doing some math there for, for people in chat there, David. Ubisoft's net worth is 3.69 billion billion. Sony is 34.1 billion. So yeah, they're not really in the same ballpark either. But you can start putting pressure on them. And ultimately the pressure is going to have to come from the fans because bad yep. press really doesn't mean anything unless it starts affecting the bottom line. Which is what happened with Battlefront 2, which yep. is why I use that example because that game sold horribly compared to the first one, and they kind of had to notice when yeah. their big tentpole release for the year didn't perform as good as their last tentpole release. Right. Like, we can all bitch about pre-orders all we want, but guess what everyone actually does? Pre-orders pre everything. shit. You can all, all complain about Call of Duty every year all you want. Guess what one of the biggest selling games of every year is? Call of Duty. So bad press means nothing if you don't take your wallet and vote with it. What do you think, David? Do you, do you think that Sony will relent eventually, like with the next console generation? Or are they just going to keep saying fuck it until they're forced to? Or do you even think they'll be forced to? Do you think that consumers wherewithal will be strong enough to keep hammering Sony over this? Or will they just eventually accept this isn't going to happen and move on? I think I'm buying Fallout 76 on PC. That doesn't answer my question because you were <laughs> going to buy it on PC to begin with. Yeah, but who knows? I know a lot of people with PlayStations, and even if I had a whole crew on PlayStation, I'm not going there. And okay. I don't know exactly how many people pay as much attention as we do, which is, this is literally what we do for fun. Most people is, don't. Is, is pay attention. A lot of people probably won't even notice. And they'll just buy it, and they'll play, and they'll be like, oh, I can't play with my friends, except for all my friends play with PlayStation, because, you know, fanboyism is still very much a thing, and like minds tend to hang out. 
Right, and th there is something to that because what ultimately, in my opinion, made the loot box idea so toxic was you started having parents go, wait a minute, gambling? Finally, after so many years, and it started getting, like, governmental and in, attention. Yeah, and then government gets involved. I don't think at any point the government's going to be like, Sony, why don't you let kids play with their friends? Right. No, no one cares. There's significantly less pr sources of pressure when it comes to the this only, issue. The only way it's going to change is if Sony starts losing money, and it's a way that can be tracked and led to their lack of crossplay. You know, all this comes down to the thing that I just want them to tell me over and over again. Don't I don't want Sony to go, oh, we're looking into it, or, oh, we'll definitely take your ideas into consideration. I just want Sony to be fucking honest with me. Just go, we don't have to. It's still yeah. not a good look, but at least it's that feeling of being lied to. I hate being lied to, and this is Sony lying to us, and they say things like, we'll look into it. That'd be pretty ballsy. They're just like, at this point, we don't want crossplay. I, I'm dying here, so I'm going to mute my mic and take something to drink. David, kill time. Sorry. <laughs> uh, well, I'm pretty sure we're beating this to death. Um, I know a bunch of people are still mad about the fact that Fallout 76 isn't a single-player Fallout game, but that doesn't mean it's for you. It's for me. Because every time I play a Bethesda game, the one thing I think of is, man, this would be fun with a couple of friends. See, not me. But I am well, I, I need more information on Fallout 76. I still don't know what it is exactly, and I don't think anyone does, and that's by design. It's an online survival RPG with story elements. But they've been cagey to even confirm that. Like no, that was all like in the trailer for me 3 There's something yeah. else here, though. I, I don't think they're telling us everything about it, and they keep saying that. I could have sworn I've seen Bethesda come out and say, you're kind of misrepresenting what this game is going to be but we're not willing to get into details yet i want more details as to what is going on here but anyways we'll find out. i'm sure we'll find out by the it comes out when november? october november okay one of the few games that's willing to stand up to red dead this year but it, they're really two separate things yeah but not the same month <laughs> no not at all call of duty moved man like it's a big deal yeah, Call of Duty did move. <laughs> that it's is coming so out sensitive. early this year for like the first time ever. Nothing moves Call of Duty except for Red Dead. Yeah, fair enough. David, why don't you go ahead and lead us to the next story here? Um, uh, this is a story from IGN. And remember way the hell back in the day when people were talking about Halo all the time, like before this new release? And there was this rumor they were going to make a TV show based on Halo. Oh, it wasn't just a rumor. It was announced at E3. They had, like, a partnership with oh, Steven I was going to say, originally that. there was this rumor, and then it was confirmed. And everyone's like, oh, that's hype. We're going to get a Halo TV show. And it's probably going to be bad because it's a TV show based on a video game. And most people don't know how to adapt anything. And people aren't going to like it for the reasons they like the video game. But that's my problem, not everybody else's. Uh, and a lot of people got really excited. And then it went dark. Like and now it's 2018, dark. and we still don't have a damn Halo TV show. But in this article, there's actually a little bit more news. It seems like the show's potentially picking up steam. Uh, Showtime actually has announced a series pickup for a live-action adaptation of the epic Xbox game franchise, which they're calling Halo, which makes a lot of sense, with Kyle Killen from Awake serving as the executive producer, writer, and showrunner. Do you that know what the hell Awake the... is? Uh, no, I've never heard of it. I know what right. a showrunner is, though, so I was yeah. going to talk about that. That's the guy, so when they have the writer's room and there's all the writers that are writing the scripts for the various episodes, he's the guy that picks the overall theme of the show and kind of picks the pieces of their drafts that he likes so that the whole show works cohesively. That's okay. what a showrunner does. I learned that recently. Um, and the Rise of the Planet of the Apes director, Rupert Wyatt, will helm multiple episodes and also executive produce. Um, notice that he's not helming all of the episodes so they'll probably have some guest directors and do some other fun stuff the scripted drama will feature 10 hour long episodes in its first season and is expected to be in production in early 2019 so it's that's begin production that... in 19 so you probably won't get the first episode of this till 2020 no you can see it fall 2019 depends on how hard they crank it out we'll see uh, according to showtime the adaptation of halo will take place in the universe it first came to be in 2001 dramatizing an epic 26th century conflict between humanity and an alien threat known as the covenant halo will weave deeply drawn personal stories with action adventure and a richly imagined vision of the future what do you want from this um i want them to not stick to video game tropes and just make a damn good sci-fi show i don't okay. want them to spoon feed me just 
Halo references all the damn time. I want them to take elements of the universe and just make a space opera. There was a show in the 90s, the late 90s, called Space Above and Beyond. And it was essentially about intergalactic marines. Think the colonial marines and aliens and you're not too far off. That is what I want this show to be. I don't want it to revolve around Master Chief. In fact, I don't even want to see a single Spartan except for maybe like a cameo somewhere. I want this to follow the story of like a squad of grunts, the poor bastards on the front line who are facing overwhelming alien firepower and the shit they have to go through. Because I think if you make it super dramatic and humanize it, you take away the I'm the Billy Badass Master Chief and I can withstand like 50,000 grunts coming at me with a flick of my wrist. Get rid of the whole Mary Sue aspect of it. Yes. Like don't make one guy who's just invincible to everything and will always win because he has to and actually just throw in a bunch of characters with stories and backstories that can die yes and make everybody really sad i want it dark i want it gritty and part of me kind of wants it to be oh you said get away from the video game aspect i'm gonna compare it to a video game though i want this to be roughly like the intro to battlefield one was oh damn Where every okay. two or three episodes we're gonna focus on this one character and then he dies and then we'll focus on another character for like two or three episodes and then she dies and it just bounces between these stories of these people rather than kind of make it almost like an anthology series where it's like, okay, for these two episodes, this is going to be the story of Lieutenant Bob, part of the orbital dropship troops that landed on Reach. And then the next two stories, here is this civilian who is trying to run from Mumbai or whatever the city on Earth they hit was. Oh, and then the last episode's easy because you just write the whole show or the, write the whole ending from the perspective of the general who's losing all these troops. Yeah. And he's actually writing memoirs about how all these troops trust him at some point in time as he solo pilots a battle cruiser into like a covenant ship. <laughs> or, or something. That I, the, My point is I don't want super powered leads in this. I want it told from the point of view of your basic human. So no spark. I don't want a single Spartan in the entire show. That will make it way more watchable. Because you can't really relate to, like, this giant, perfect, armored dude. Right. Who, who you don't even ever see his face. And, in fact, making a show about Master Chief would take away from Master Chief. Because his whole point is he is just a soldier who is designed to murder shit. Yeah. You don't want to humanize him. It's like making a Judge Dredd movie and then having him take off his mask. Yeah. The fuck would you do that, Sylvester Stallone? <laughs> take tips from uh... Carl Urban. I mean, that's a little late. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> doesn't work out. Um, so, I sense potential here. TV shows, is that's where we're all going for the most part. You still have your big blockbuster movies, but if you want to tell an in-depth story, it's no longer taboo to go, oh, we can't tell an episodic story that takes multiple seasons to explain because people will get lost and don't know what's going on. In this age of Netflix, when we can just start anything we want from the beginning, we get to do that now. Also, TV is getting so good now. It's a little absurd. Yeah, uh, I look forward to TV shows more than I do movies for the most part, with rare yeah. exception. Anyways, you let us know what... This next, you want to talk about this next non-thing? I do. Before, <laughs> I, before I move on, though, I just want to say, what do you guys want from a Halo TV show? Let us know down in the comments below. Oh, yeah. Good idea. So this next non-thing, which I could have sworn we already talked about once, like a few months ago, this, this seems like something we all knew. This article here from Eurogamer. Uncharted creator Amy Henning has departed EA and her Star Wars game is on the shelf. Well, no shit. Yeah, we know that since January. I, I guess there's been no official word. And this is finally official confirmation of it. But yeah, this is something that we've known for a while. Going from the article itself here. Today at the Game Lab conference in Barcelona, Henning received Eurogamer, revealed to Eurogamer's Rob Purchase that she had actually parted ways of EA as of January this year. It was in the process of starting up her new independent studio, but had not yet the chance to announce the change or being set or setting the record straight, rather. Okay, the only thing we didn't know she was setting up her own independent studio. But I have to drive home. I swore we knew that Amy Henning was out at EA. I thought this was officially announced. Or do we all just kind of assume it? It, it might have just been speculation because it was so, like, the writing was so apparent and then just no one actually said the words. Um... Because they shut down the studio, and then they said, by the way, that new Star Wars game that you want that's vaguely in the style of, 
Uncharted ain't going to happen because Amy's gone and that whole project is shut down. Hey, Star and we're Wars 13 13 did. And we're going to give the Star Wars project to a different branch entirely and they're going to make some multiplayer game. Yeah. Because that's how money is made, according to EA. Well, I guess I wouldn't take money advice from EA because I don't know how badly Battlefield 2 fucked them. Battlefront. Battlefront 2. I, th- I think you you're... know what game I'm talking about. And... <laughs> yeah, but you're always bad at that. I got it. I am. On. I can't keep it straight for shit. Luckily, the next okay, one is a V. Cool. You'll get that easier. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. I like Any Henny. Uh, a real big string of unlucky breaks for her lately. She she parted ways with Naughty Dog during the development of Uncharted 4, and it did not appear to be amicable. There, there seemed to be a lot of friction there. Nothing ever confirmed, but that did not seem to be a graceful parting of ways between Amy Hagen and Naughty Dog. In fact, they, I believe they announced they scrapped most of what she did for Uncharted 4. It went under mass, massive rewrites. Then she winds up at EA with Visceral working on the Star Wars project, and then Visceral gets shut down. I, I feel like she has been in a holding pattern for years because you spend months and months and months writing out something for a game you're not working on anything else and then one day they go okay we don't need you anymore so that's months to years of your life and your career that you have nothing to show for that shit has to be frustrating sounds like though she is tired of all that and she's making an own independent studio with no official announcement on what she's working on yet so more power to her her. thing it, it's and, hard. Uh, she is one of those people that has been in gaming for a long time, and it is impossible to understate how influential she is on the mm-hmm. development side of things. I'm excited to see what she can do with like her own free time and her own studio. Right. We'll definitely see how that shakes out. But keep in mind, too, I was feeling that same way with Ken Levine. And what has he done lately since after Bioshock Infinite? There hasn't even been an announcement of what he's working on. Yeah, but who knows? He could show up any day and just blow everybody away. We'll see how it works. Let's go ahead and move on to the next topic here, David. Why don't you take over and I meet my mic again because I am just dying. My throat is killing me. <laughs> um, so this is, I don't know. It's a weird week. E3 happened. No one wants to talk about anything game related. Uh, this is from Charlie Intel, which is apparently a website that has news sometimes. And th- this is, uh, I'm gonna, I actually want to preface this because we've talked about this kind of story before and I never like it because it's it's non-news to me. This is speculation based on a job posting. That's what kind of news this is. But, according to this source, Call of <laughs> Duty 2019 might have a campaign mode. Ooh. So an unannounced Call of Duty in the future, which we know is coming, might have a campaign, even though they literally just ripped the fucking campaign out of the last one, because <clears throat> there's a new job listing on Infinity Warb's job page that says come work with the game industry's brightest on a new exciting unannounced title for multiple next-gen platforms in this hands-on role you'll collaborate with scripters sound designers writers and directors to implement voiceover performances in game across a wide variety of player experiences from combat to set pieces in addition one of the roles of the job is to have a strong desire to bring life to game characters through naturalistic and cinematic implementation of vocal performance this could literally just be like a little tiny story zombie mode it could be so, it, this I is just, one of those things where the lead I can't is buried. stand these stories. That's not what the important story to this is, yes, in my opinion. The important story is a small little throwaway quote right here at the very beginning. Unannounced title for multiple next-gen platforms for Call of Duty 2019. To yeah. me, that suggests we might have next-generation consoles this uh, next year. Nah fall next year yeah really no you don't think so do you think that when no. they say next gen they mean xbox or xbox one playstation 4 pro i think they made current gen because this job description was written by an hr person which usually means you have to it'll be vetted even harder i don't know I, I i think the story here isn't that call of duty 2019 might have a campaign it's infinity ward by the way who's doing this one so it makes sense that they would I think the story here is call, we might have next generation consoles as early as fall 2019. There's I just there's no way. Just no way at all. You don't think that's no. going to happen at all? 
You don't no. think that at PSX this year, Sony might be like, let's talk about the future. They might vaguely be like, we're working on it. Well, that wouldn't be It'll so much happen eventually. When, when do you think is the latest? That, that, the, or let me, the let, let's latest have, they'll talk about yeah. it? Yeah, when's the latest they'll talk about it? I mean, I assume they would start bringing stuff up next year and the consoles would come out in 2020. Like, they have to be announced the... at, at E3 2019, right? Yeah. That's why, that's why this E3 was so lackluster, in my opinion. Yeah, that makes the most sense. Okay. So, you figure early 2020 is probably when they'll launch. Uh, it depends on who beats who to the market. Okay. I think Microsoft is probably working to churn a system out before Sony does. I get a distinct feeling that once these consoles are officially announced, it is only going to be a few months before they hit the market. I I honestly feel that 2019 is going to be the year the new consoles hit. Because no one wants to no one wants to get Xboxed again, where they announce their console and then they have enough time to kind of fuck with them. And Sony did that within that same day. I think these are going to be one of those things where they come out when they finally announce it, they're going to be like, here are the specs, here are the launch titles, here's the price. It will be four months from now. I think they are going to be super aggressive on fighting each other to get their console out as fast as possible the moment they announce it. That I agree with. But you but just, I don't... just don't... I just okay. don't see it happening next year. But... You agree with me that they have to announce their consoles by E3 2019, right? I mean, I guess it makes sense. It's just, it's just stupid. It, it feels, it feels quick, but it's, it's been. Let me double check well, to see when PlayStation and Xbox actually came out. Yeah, but like the One X came out less than a year ago. Well, those were stopgap consoles designed to stretch things out a little bit longer. Uh, the Xbox One 2013. PlayStation 4 would have been which 2013 is, then as well. Yep. Which is which is five years. Which is what a normal console cycle was until the PlayStation 3, Xbox 360. But those were stretched to eight years because of the economic crisis in the United States, which triggered it everywhere across the world. They've been very open about and in, that. And then both of these companies made mid-tier consoles yep. with the exact effect or uh, intention of stretching this console generation. So why would they stretch this console generation to the average console generation length? Because I don't, they weren't stretching the they weren't stretching the console generation, in my opinion. That's what they told people to sell them because you don't want to tell people, oh, we'll have a new one a year from now. You go, oh yeah, it's just going to be an improvement on this current generation's hardware, kind of like how the Xbox One S was or the PlayStation Four Slim. That's how I rationalized the PlayStation Four Pro and the, the the Xbox One X. They are this generation's version of the S and the small and the slim and all that. Okay, well, I guess if we want to get really technical, we're already in the next gen. Because of the Switch? Because of the Switch. Switch is, see, here, here's here's what's scary about the Switch, and, and I, I don't mean scary as in a positive thing. I mean scary for Nintendo. The Switch, I think, obviously has blown its load already. It had to, by necessity, upfront all their heavy hitters out the gate. Now they really don't have all that much left until Pokemon comes around. And the console itself is already weaker hardware-wise than the other two big boys out there. And that difference is going to get drastically worse when the next generations come out. Now, as long as Nintendo keeps being Nintendo and producing a good solid title every month, and they have been so far. Uh, Mario Tennis Ace is kind of mixed reviews, but it's, it's a Mario Tennis game. Who cares? As long as Dude, they can the kind Crash of... Bandicoot Insane Trilogy is like number one seller right now. Yeah. As long as they can kind of keep that momentum going, they'll be fine. But I think that they're going to start eating it a little bit once these new consoles come out. And I don't consider the Switch a next-gen console. I know. I just had to bust your I, I consider it a late this-gen console that has the power of a 2014 console. Get which is. Which is pre-Pro and pre-Xbox uh, One. I could be wrong on that tech-wise, but that's just how it appears to me. And I need to I need to make clear, I am not saying the Switch is bad. I love the fucking Switch. Mm -hmm. But I think Nintendo fired off a full salvo, and it's going to, when it launched with Mario Odyssey and Zelda, by necessity to get the taste of the Wii U out. And it's going to take time to reload those cannons 
And I think that by the time Nintendo is ready to fire that salvo off again, you will have the next generation of consoles out. Which is which means that salvo is going to be significantly less effective. We'll see. Anyways, let us know what you think down below when you think the consoles are going to be coming out. If you think they're going to be late next year, early 2020, 2021, and try to give a reasoning behind it too. I always like to see what people's ideas behind that stuff is. Let's go ahead and move on to the last story here, David, of the night. Not even really video gaming related, but this is a cool idea. I want to bring this up. Binding of Isaac creator Edmund McMullen has created a Kickstarter for a Binding of Isaac spinoff card game. His trailer Binding... is pretty funny, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, called Binding of Isaac the Four Souls. This is kind of stretched a little bit. Let me see if I can't clean that up for people here. Here we go. It is the official Binding of Isaac multiplayer card game about sacrifice, betrayal, and hoarding. It started a couple days ago and has already blown past its $500,000 goal. with $50,000 goal. $50,000 goal with $836,000 raised in like four days. It was 100% funded in less than two hours. Yes. Uh, game he makes a big cool. deal to talk about the fact that the card game plays as close as he can to the video game, even though it doesn't play like the video game at all because it's a multiplayer cooperative slash betrayal slash hoarding card game with, with you know tokens and cards. And uh, people seem pretty damn excited about it because they spent all their damn Kickstarter money. I right. want to play it. It looks Once really again, cool. I'll point out that it is a board game style thing on Kickstarter, so I'm all for it. I don't like kickstarting ideas. Um, I especially don't like kickstarting video games because a lot of them turn into vaporware. This is a product that already exists and is playable, and he needs the damn money so he can print it and send it to you. I yes. like board game Kickstarter. Same here. Uh, I was... I'm also a sucker for board games in general, so that's that's just my bad. I am notoriously against video game kickstarters for the most part because of all the reasons you said a lot of times they turn into vaporware every now and then you get something great but for the most part the cost of these things are always underestimated and what the kickstarter is for isn't really to develop the game but to gauge interest so they can hope to get like an angel backer to swoop down and pick it up with the board game stuff like bind of isaac lost souls here or four souls rather the rules are already online. You can take... I don't know if it is for this particular card game, but for the most part, with most Maybe board just games... just scroll all the way down. Okay. It's on the Kickstarter page. There you go. With most board game. games, the rules are already online. The gameplay is already set. There is already mm -hmm. the skeleton here. They just need to pay the production cost to print the shit up. Yeah. They, they just need the money to send it off to somebody who can print in mass, box it up, and ship it out. Yeah. So I'm, I'm way more trusting of board game Kickstarters because of that. The doom that came to Atlantic City notwithstanding if you if you remember hearing about that you remember that one uh vaguely that was the cthulhu monopoly game that like the guy literally just took the money and ran or something along those lines allegedly because i'm not a lawyer <laughs> that'll happen so yeah go take a look at it if you're a big fan of binding of isaac it looks cool it definitely seems to be cooperative you're flipping over enemies and you're collectively fighting it but there are some rules that are like rather than you take the damage give it to someone else or take someone's item so there's a little bit of screwery in there as well and i love those games i love the the idea of it i love the concept of it and i like Edmund mcmillan so i want to give him as much support as i can the kickstarter link will of course be included in the description down below david um well, full disclosure, we're just talking about this guy's Kickstarter in the hopes that eventually he will join our podcast as another guest. <laughs> I have technically offered an invite for him to show up uh, and discuss this Kickstarter if he chooses. <laughs> it's totally on him. Either way, regardless if Ed McMillan shows up or not, his board game is, at best, months away. But if I wanted to play something right now, David, what can I play this week? Um... Well, there's a few things you can play this week. If you're really interested in hearing the news, there's not a lot of that. So <laughs> we're already about to wrap this up. Uh, but uh, one thing that's out this week, it's actually pretty dang exciting, is Red Faction Guerrilla Remastered. Yes, they made that pun, and they did it on purpose. Um, if you're not aware, Red Faction Guerrilla is the good one. I would say great uh, one. Uh, 
It's uh, a great one. The review for Game Points is actually up on YouTube right now if you want to go take a look at it. I was playing it over the weekend. It's, re it's Red Faction Guerrilla, which is one of my favorite open world games of all time. Still the gold standard for destructibility. No game comes close to how well you can just blow up buildings in this, except for maybe Battlefield Bad Company. Go take a look at it. 30 bucks is a high asking price for consoles, especially if you played Red Faction Guerrilla already. But what's amazing is if you have the Steam edition of Red Faction Guerrilla, you're getting this game for free. Oh, man, look at that. They took a game that was released that potentially could have had some problems, and then they upped the resolution and made it play slightly better, but didn't really change anything, and then they gave it to you for free? Look at wow. that from software. Thanks, THQ, Normic. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, FromSoft. I think we might have some some issues uh, here. Give me one second to sort the stream out. We might have some issues, everybody. Please hold on to your hats. I'm getting some dropped frames. It looks like that everything is going right to hell. So one second, one second. I just want to. He's just bad at this. By the way, Steve Birch, 90, 1998, I appreciate you showing up. I hope that the stream stabilizes a little bit there. I know Twitch was having some problems earlier. Okay, I, th I think we might be. I think we might be getting stabilized. We'll find out. Oh, well. uh, anyways, going back on to the topic of Red Faction Guerrilla. It's fun. If you never played it before, I recommend taking a look at it. Like I said, 30 bucks is kind of high price, but if you get it, if you already had it for PC, definitely take a look at it for free. My biggest beef with it is they didn't update the audio, though. The audio still sounds really washed out, and if anything, it sounds worse now than it did before. That sucks. Yeah. That's actually really bad. Like the voice, the voice and everything's fine. The music's fine, but specifically the gunfire sounds really, really weak. And I know you're an audio guy, so that probably just kicked you right in the dick. Yeah, that 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 really tempers me wanting to get this. Uh, I'll have to just wait until it's four dollars. <laughs> Pick it up on a Steam sale, baby. Right. I mean, I never picked up Grill in the first place, so we'll see how that works out. <laughs> uh. What else we got coming out, David? Uh, so we also got coming out, we've got Runbo on Switch. Um, Runbo, if you're not aware, is a platform racing video game, which actually came out on the Wii U. Um, and then it got ported to PC, 3DS, Xbox One. And much like a lot of other Switch games, it's it's a port. <laughs> <laughs> That's rapidly becoming what the Switch is. It's a port machine. But I don't actually have a problem with it, at least yet. Um, there's a bunch of just shit in the store and at some point they need to curate that but for right now i'm able to look at games that i completely ignored because they came out on the wii u and i didn't want to pay attention to that console at all um and some of the stuff's pretty decent this is a nine player multiplayer platformer where you're basically just race racing through levels to get to a trophy at the end um so like you double jump you can attack and defeat enemies or you know jump off something's head to get a little bit extra reach the background's kind of like changing so if you have like a seizure warning don't play maybe as much <laughs> um i know this has been out for a while special modes and all kinds of stuff yeah it's been out it's been out for a bit and now you can play it on switch i'm interested to see how many players it supports because i don't actually know how many joy cons you compare to a switch i'm pretty sure it's just four but maybe you can do like a multi-switch multiplayer thing and get up to nine players at least that's what the wii u had so who knows uh, also coming out this week is pocket rumble on switch which I think it looks rad. Uh, I know I play way more fighting games than you do, but oh, this yeah. is in inspired by the old school SNK fighters for Neo Geo Pocket. It's got kind of like Street Fighter adjacent gameplay, but with really simple inputs. It's a two button fighting game and like an old school 8 bit art style. And it's basically built to be like a beginner friendly fighting game. So it has all okay. the same gameplay elements of regular 2D fighters, you know, like jumping and blocking and special moves and super moves and all that fun stuff. But it's two buttons, and all the input is way easier. I don't want to say lax, but I'll just say easier um, for someone new to pick up and actually play a fighting game and potentially get decent with it. So you don't have to like memorize exact frame input timing and just defend and deal with all that stuff. You can just play a cool 2D fighting game on your Switch. Very cool. So I'll probably have more to say about that next week after I've played it. <laughs> um 
Okay, this other one on the list, I actually don't want to bring up because I'm pretty sh damn sure this game got delayed again. Because originally we were going to talk about Warhammer 40k Inquisition Martyr, which I'm fairly positive I told you guys came out like a month ago. It um, was an early access. But it was delayed, and I think right now the release date actually got moved again to August 23rd. Did it really? Yeah. <laughs> when did it get delayed? Because um, I swore I, I looked know, this up earlier today. This game is going to come out eventually, and it looks interesting, but I've heard that the mechanics don't mesh that well from people that have played the early access. Um, I don't Man, know. Here's might, the thing about Warhammer games. It might be out games. today. I'm not sure. Games Workshop <laughs> is so fucking frivolous with their license. They will slap it on any piece of shit. Sometimes you get amazing Which is funny things. is because they hated giving their license out for the longest time. Yeah. They would refuse to let any games made on their, work, on their franchises happen. There was Every like Dawn of War, and that was it. Yeah, every now and then you get something amazing, like Dawn of War, like uh, Vermintide. Hey, how about that first Space Hulk game? That was decent. No. Or not Space Hulk. Uh, um, God damn it. Say it. The, like PS3, Xbox 360 era. Space Marine? S Space Marine, yes. Space Marine was good. But for every one of those, you get like a fucking Deathwing or uh, a Fire Warrior. They don't, they they literally license out their IP to anyone who is willing to fucking pay for it, regardless of quality. And it does more damage than good. At this point, I do not trust any Warhammer game at all until I physically They really see need it. to find the balance point for this. They're, they're just throwing it out. Um, although, that being said, Vermintide is still great. Vermintide 2 is also great. Vermintide 2 is amazing. So, uh... Come on, guys. Just let more stuff like that happen. <laughs> yeah. Just pay a little bit more attention. You'll Some fucking fine. quality control, guys. All right. Um, I guess I'm just going to talk about more Switch games. <laughs> yeah. <we laughs> Let's got... talk about Mushroom Wars 2. Yeah, that's coming out on Switch. It's already on iOS and Android and Xbox One and PS4 and Steam. Wow, you mean another Switch port? Weird. That's uh, what I'm talking this... about. That's why I think the Switch might be in trouble. Because they, they, they are releasing a good big title game every month, but those three weeks that aren't that release week are just filled of nothing but, let's face it, iOS ports. Yeah, uh, the amount of like phone games that are on the Switch is really concerning to me. I um, mean, I get that some phone games are decent, and they got ported to consoles and, and, and Steam and stuff, and that's cool. I, I'm fine with that. But the amount of just legitimate phone ports to Switch really upsetting this there's is the same shit that i saw on the wii there's a game that was released that still had all of the monetization stuff in it that's a free-to-play game on your phone and it's a 20 dollars game on switch and you still have to like pay to recharge your gems and shit so you can play the game come on uh, but anyway mushroom Rose 2 <laughs> is a game that you can play it's a real-time strategy where you pick a, a hero in like this mushroom woodland fairy tale kingdom um, and then there's like leagues and rank matches and a single player campaign and all kinds of fancy stuff. Um, and there's a two player co-op mode. It's, it's a mushroom based strategy, uh, real time, real time strategy game. I don't, I don't really know <laughs> how, to get, how to get hyped on that. <laughs> all right. Go ahead and bring us on with the final one here, David. Uh, and again, uh, the last thing we have is another switch game. This is called flat heroes. It's a, minimalist super intense local multiplayer game with cooperative and competitive modes for one to four people and it has a bunch of squares in it uh, i mean literally look it up it's it's got a bunch of squares in it. Okay. uh you play squares and you you dash around areas i mean it looks like the oldest of school games it's a top-down map uh you're playing as a block and you're kind of dodging around and Let's take i don't a look know here. Let's take it a reminds look. me of, it reminds me of old like tank battle games on like commodore and shit oh like, like conquest and shit yeah or combat or whatever it was called the tank game on atari so you just you drive blocks around and there's there's physics sometimes and you dodge this you, i don't know dude it's weird i'm probably not gonna play it but you can look it up <laughs> enjoy internet you're welcome <laughs> uh has been game point should we if we get together yeah i think this wraps up things up uh, like... <laughs> not much not much for news this week and honestly i think twitch is starting to eat itself that happens because <laughs> it, it's 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 been having problems all day so i think we're going to go ahead and wrap up the show here this has been game points episode 133 
your weekly little get together to talk about recent gaming news. I'd like to thank the people out in chat, Real Pie Master and C Birch1998. Always appreciate you guys showing up when you can. If you like what you see here, follow, subscribe, all that good stuff. You guys know what to do. If you're watching us on YouTube, feel free to give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down and comment down below. If you want to follow the show, you can do so at Game Points PC over on Twitter. You can follow myself, Capitalist Pig, at twenty at Stephen Brown at Capitalist Pig twenty one, or David Smith over there at Powerslap underscore Satori. Until next week, this has been Game Points, and we're out of here.